um, put your chat questions uh, into the chat box and we'll make sure that we answer all of your questions. Uh, we are very excited to announce um, the LK936ST has won the uh, Projector Central Award uh, for 2021. Um, so super excited about that today and today uh, uh, we'll have Bob Wudek um, go through the presentation. Uh, take it away, Bob. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for your time this morning. Um, this is a uh, first for BenQ and actually a first in the golf simulation and projector business where uh, a projector has been designed specifically for golf simulation and simulation in general. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, macro environment. So if you uh, look at the agenda here. So the first thing we want to talk about is uh, what's happening in the golf simulator market. Most of you guys are, are very close to this, so uh, we'll look at more what's happening on the display side rather than uh, cameras and other pieces of the market. And then the second thing that we want to look at is what makes this projector different than any of the other projectors that you've maybe sold in the past or have looked at and, uh, and why, more importantly. Um, so you can see the bullet points there. There's a number of, of uh, hardware features in there, but, but really when you look at a product that's designed for a specific purpose, there's a lot of engineering that goes in beyond the specs. Um, so we'll talk about that. And then finally, there are a lot of projectors out there. Um, BenQ alone has 75 models, and there are a lot of other brands that have projectors. Many brands have left the projector business, but how does it compare against other uh, high brightness 4K projectors that you might have looked at or seen or have been even selling or considering now. So um, with that, let's go look at what's happening out there in the world. One of the, as a reseller and as a manufacturer, one of the key things is that technology transitions almost always beget market share shifts. Uh, you've seen this in mobile phones with uh, Nokia being the market leader. A technology transition happened with the iPhone, and now Nokia isn't in the smartphone business. In golf, we've been all using the same technology for driving ranges for the last century or so, which is put a piece of grass out there, uh, have a hitting area, and use a tractor to pick up balls. But in the last few years, what we've seen is Technology being adapted to a historic paradigm, and now you have a multi-billion dollar capitalized company called Topgolf. And what they've done is essentially, yeah, go ahead to the next picture there, is Topgolf has taken the same thing that we do on the grass driving range, but wrapped technology around it in terms of smart golf balls, screens, and also the living area. You can see this has got couches, it's got tables, it's got TVs, and, and they turned a driving range into a bar. And now the market capitalization and the revenue the Top Golf gets probably exceeds uh, what most driving range might make for the entire East Coast for the year. So now in the um, golf simulation uh, element, we've had a similar technology transition because we've been selling projectors for golf simulators for a long, long time, um, at least 10 years with our short throw projectors. And primarily they were lamp-based. They were designed uh, for dedicated practice areas. But what's happening now is that as these projectors are getting better and as golf simulation is becoming more mainstream, people are looking to do more with the golf simulator and so this is where the concept of a sim theater kicks in. And, and we've, we've noticed that uh, when people are posting pictures of their, their hitting areas, they're doing one of two things. Either it looks like the left image, where you have a, a hitting area with a, a mat and a, a relatively smaller square screen, or it's a large expansive area uh, that looks kind of like top golf. You've got seating area, you've got uh, screens, and you've got everybody focused on the wide area, and, and they're using the projector as the virtual environment that they're enjoying, and they're using it for other pieces of, uh, of technology. They're using it for movies, they're using it for gaming, and this type of thing. And so we've been researching this for a couple of years, and we think that this projector is really going to be the catalyst to be able to make this system affordable and effective. 
Now, what else is happening in the projector world uh, and, and why is this a, a key moment in the projector uh, launch cycle for this? Well, first of all, golf simulators have become mainstream. They're not just for golf fanatics. And the fastest growing part of the golf simulation business from what we've been able to find in our research is the middle class and the premium, where you're seeing people spend thousands of dollars for a camera and tens of thousands of dollars, in some cases, $100,000 for the actual room itself. But when you look at a, a golf simulation that is $10,000 or more, uh, to twenty or thirty thousand dollars or more, and you've got that wrapped in a low interest uh, home improvement loan, or it's replacing a dedicated home theater. This is where a lot of the market growth and the enthusiasm of people who had never considered a golf simulator before will now consider a home theater and simulation area that's right for the whole family. And that means that while a lot of folks have been selling five, six, seven, eight hundred dollar projectors. Now, instead of making no margin on a five or six or seven hundred dollar projector, uh, there's a tremendous opportunity to have a uh, beautiful projector where not only do you make margin on the uh, on the actual simulation uh, technology and the mats and the screen itself, but now you also can match that up with a beautiful projector and compete. Uh, again, with the traditional home theater uh, integrator. So uh, let's go to the next slide here and uh, see what are the dynamics around that that might make that uh, different than a traditional home theater. Hey, Bob, I just want to stop real quick and make mention as people um, join the, the webinar. Uh, we do we do, are accepting questions. Uh, if you just want to go ahead and put those into the chat box and we'll make sure to ask uh, answer them at the end of the webinar. So traditionally a projector was a lamp-based projector and because golf simulation hitting areas need to be lit so that the camera can see the golf ball, uh, you typically would see a 4,000 or higher uh, lumen projector. And that's what most of the folks who are selling projectors uh, with golf simulations, that's what they've been specking out. But what's happened here is that really in the last year post uh, COVID, is that in the four to 5,000 lumen range, that market has almost flipped entirely. On the right side of the picture, you'll see that the 5,000 lumen projector market, and this number just came out um, on Monday actually, that all, less than 15% of all 5,000 lumen projectors use a lamp. So my advice to anybody that's selling a 5,000 lumen with a projector with a lamp is stop, Flip them to laser as fast as possible, and you'll see why in a second. But what's even more amazing is that in the 4,000 lumen range, which is really in the $1,000 price point uh, piece, this is also happening. So you can now get a 4,000 lumen projector that's uh, very solid for under $2,000, and people are abandoning lamps faster than we've ever seen before. This is one of the fastest technology flips in the projector business that I've ever seen in a decade of being in here. So um, key points to know when you're putting together a projector and a golf simulation, whether it's a BenQ or not. So let's look a little closer here at some of these other trends. Go to the next slide. It begs the question, what does the perfect golf simulator look like? And uh, we'd love to get your comments on this because this is something that we have a whole team of engineers and um, product teams that are working to create a perfect golf simulator projector. First of all, uh, it has to have a stunning picture, which uh, this is actually a shot from a YouTube video of a projector reviewer looking at our 4K technology. So this is Pebble Beach number seven. I'm sure everybody is on the call has seen it and many of you guys have played it. And if you've played it, you know what it looks like exactly. And uh, this is uh, getting very, very close to what uh, it should look like. Um, there's a lot of detail that uh, we can now put on a projector that five years ago you couldn't. And we'll talk a little bit about, about that more when we look at uh, different projector models. Um, but uh, one of the dynamics that you'll start to see is the bottom bullet point of this slide. 
how do you use it for family entertainment? And this is where a traditional golf simulation projector may not be right as a sim theater projector, because when you look at a home theater, if you can click the slide there and show the next picture, you'll see that here is a picture that looks radically different from the top picture. The top picture is bright, vibrant, has lots of color and everything like that. But here on the lower end, this is a scene from Lord of the Rings. And if you go to a home theater enthusiast, he's going to tell you that the hair is either the right color or the wrong color. The skin tone is either the right color or the wrong color. And you'll notice that in the, the scene overall, the colors are very muted. And by the way, this is what some of the golf simulator engines that they're working on is to get it to look more like this, so it looks more realistic. But BenQ is a market leader in home theater projectors. Our engineers spend countless hours trying to make sure that uh, Frodo's hair is the right shade of black, not true black, not gray, not, it's got the right shade of black and brown, because that's what home theater customers want. So this is the challenge. How do you get a projector that looks fantastic on the bottom image to be able to replicate the top image at a high enough brightness level that you can actually use it in a brightly lit room. Let's go to the next slide. So I'm a big fan of MasterChef and they never show the recipe, but uh, uh, there's always key ingredients that are a part of any successful um, dish that a, that a contestant cooks up. So let's look at what the ingredients are uh, for a golf simulation projector. The first thing, and this is kind of a surprise to a lot of folks uh, maybe a year ago, is the concept of resolution. We typically think of a lot of golf simulators of having XGA resolution. And last year, a lot of projectors uh, were sold with XGA, and XGA is a phenomenal resolution if you're doing a smaller square screen and you need something at a lower price. The upgrade traditionally though has been 1080p. And 1080p has 2 million pixels on the screen and wide UXGA, which is the upgrade of upgrades, only has 2.4 million pixels on the screen. So why does that matter? Well, when you go ahead and look at 4K resolution, if you go ahead and click there, on a larger screen, you need more pixels. If you go to Costco and you look at what the TVs that are sold at Costco, you'll realize that all of them have 4K, 8.3 million pixels on a 75 inch TV. When you guys are selling 12, in, 12 foot wide screens, screens that are massively larger. So, <clears throat> so 4K resolution really uh, is the essential to be able to have a smooth, natural looking image. But here's the other point. In a home theater, people are, are sitting back 10, 15 feet. In a golf simulator, oftentimes you're a lot closer. So not only are you need more pixels, a golfer is closer to the screen and you need pixels even more because now you can see them. Finally, the ecosystem is actually generating a 4K image. E6 has them. Almost all of the golf simulator systems now have 4K golf sim software, and many of them are working on second and third generation engines, just like the gaming companies are to get hyper-realistic images. So now you've got more and more detail that is going to be able to be supported by a 4K projector. And then um, let's go to the next bullet point here. Everything else that you're going to put onto that uh, projected image on a sim theater is 4K. Maybe some of you guys like to watch the masters. I certainly do. It comes through streamed on 4K and it's one of the best 4K images I've seen. We love to record it and use that as test images because of all the vibrant colors and HDR support. All of your PlayStations, all of your Xboxes now output a true 4K projector. And even my GoPro camera that I just bought outputs a 4K image. So bottom line is if you're using this for any other activity, particularly for family related or movie or TV related things, the native resolution now is 4K. And by the way, it has been that way for a while. So why don't we do more 4K projectors on, uh, in golf simulations? Well, there's a couple of reasons why. So let's take a look at that. The first thing for golf simulation projectors is that while resolution is important, 
one of the most overlooked pieces is color accuracy. And it's hard to explain color accuracy uh, outside of a live demonstration. So I'm gonna use YouTube here to explain how this, uh, how this works. Most beginners want to have a bright projector so that the picture doesn't look dull. And there's a lot of projectors out there that will do lots of lumens and they will look good as the image does looks on the left. So this is the Harbor Town Golf Links from two separate YouTube screenshots. And again, you can do your own research on this in your own shops, or you can look at the same YouTube videos I did. And you can see that uh, a traditional lower cost, uh, and I'm not sure of the brand on this, but I don't think it's a BenQ projector. It uses a different technology. It has bright colors and it looks bright and vibrant. The greens are green, the blues are blue. And uh, you know you can see the trees and the sand traps are good. And this is traditionally what you've seen on a traditional golf simulator. What we've been trying to do is use the HDTV standard, industry standard for color, which is Rec 709. So if you're watching this on a monitor, chances are the monitor you have will have an sRGB mode, which is Rec 709. Uh, many of them have Rec 709 specific color spaces because the industry set up this spec to say the Green Bay Packers helmet should look this color and you have to align around that. So the percentage of Rec 709 coverage is the definitive industry accuracy color standard for anything, whether it's a monitor, whether it's digital signage, and of course, projectors. So because that's what makes realistic. These two are the same courses, but you can see they look quite a bit different. And the image on the right, hopefully to your eye, has a little bit more realistic and immersive look to it. So we like that. So how do we go ahead and, uh, yeah, don't click on that because it'll actually go to the YouTube video, um, but uh, go ahead to the next slide here. So, what are the 4K projectors that are out there today? So BenQ is one of maybe a dozen major brands, including Epson, Sony, Panasonic, uh, many other ones that are out there. So I thought we could take a journey on when people look up a 4K uh, projector, what do they find? So one of the most popular ones found online is the Epson 5050, and it is a 4K home theater projector. So how will that set up for a sim theater? Because it's certainly a home theater projector. It's a little bit brighter than most home theater projectors, uh, like from Sony or uh, JVC. Uh, it's 2,600 lumens, but that's not really bright enough for a lot of golf simulation uh, applications because of the, uh, the fact that your golf sim hitting area needs to be lit. It also, while it's marketed as a 4K projector, Today, uh, none of the uh, mainstream Epson projectors actually have true 4K UHD resolution. They have what they call 4K enhancement. And when you actually click on the little asterisk that they have or the footnote, you'll find that it only has 4 million pixels. In other words, about half the resolution of a true uh, UHD 4K TV or a true UHD 4K projector. So. But this projector does have one thing going for it, which is excellent color accuracy. So that Lord of the Rings image down below, you'll see that they just nailed that image. It's got 100% Rec. 709. All right, so how about a brighter commercial projector? Again, one of the most popular ones is the, um, the higher end Epson. I can't remember the model number now, but it's a 6,000 lumen model, so very bright. Um, also, you still have the same problem that they don't have the technology to be able to do true 4K UHD. So if you're showing a movie on this thing, uh, you're gonna only have about half as many pixels as you would on a television or a 4K projector. But here's the thing, it's brighter, but while Epson will specify the color specification on the one above it, they don't specify the color uh, specification on the one below it because uh, you know, we measured it, uh, but I don't, I, I don't want to tell what the measurement was. Epson just leaves it off. So just suffice to say that it's not as color accurate as the one up on the top, and they don't tell you how color accurate it is. So, well, what's the right projector? Well, the projector that we loved when we started this is this Sony unit over here. So what did we love about it? Well, we love the fact that it was uh, true 4K. It had over 8 million pixels. 
We love the fact that it was 5,000 lumens. And we really like the fact that it was 100% Rec. 709. And when you put this on a big giant screen, it looks really, really nice. Um, so, uh, so this is something that, in fact, when we talk to a lot of the golf sim manufacturers, it's like, oh yeah, we sell one of these about every quarter. And we're kind of surprised because while they'll sell a $20,000 camera, this projector, when you actually go to price it before the lens, because you have to buy a lens extra, it's a little bit more expensive. It's $60,000, which puts it out of the range of most mainstream. So you've got the right specs, you've got the right resolution, you've got the right color accuracy. This projector that we're going to announce has all three of these uh, for the most part. The LK 936ST has a built-in short throw lens, 5,100 lumens, so it's about the same brightness as the Sony, 8 million pixels, not quite as color accurate as the 100% of Rec. 7 and 9, but at 92, you'd have to be a video file to really tell the difference. And the street price is under $6,000. So now you don't have to compromise on the left side. You don't have to pay the price on the right side. And this creates a massive opportunity for people to, instead of doing just a single purpose dedicated golf sim or a single purpose dedicated home theater, now you could truly have a projector that will support both golf simulation and home theater. In other words, a sim theater projector. And residential technology today is starting to use this. You're starting to see um, the industry adopt this as they're getting used to it. Projector Reviews and Projector Central have already used this term as well. So uh, it's, not a, it's not a trademark term, but that's what we're calling it because it seems to be the most accurate way to describe a projector that can do truly a dual purpose uh, opportunity, which gives you the opportunity to um, dramatically increase your average selling price and your market size and penetration to a mainstream family that might just look at converting a media room. So what makes this special for golf sim? Well, we've been at this for a while. I've been we're working on a couple of things. One is the golf mode. It's a golf color mode. And if we use this from um, BenQ, if you have teenagers, uh, the BenQ and Zowie monitors are the most popular monitors amongst uh, esports professionals where people play for money and they fill up stadiums to play Counter-Strike and uh, uh, other games. I don't quite get that, but that's what happens. Uh, for those of you who are under 25, you know what I'm talking about. But the golf mode is essentially, we pull the same page. We optimize the color palette for a particular application, in this case, golf sim. We've looked at every engine that we can get our hands on and we've tweaked the colors so that the sand traps look exactly like the sand that they truck in in the real golf course. The water looks good, the sky looks good, the greens know the difference between a, a bent grass green and a Bermuda grass green. There are lots of differences in there that as a golfer you'll know, as a mainstream person you might not know. So you still have color accuracy for movies, but you also have a beautiful looking simulation. And if you have kids hook up an Xbox to it and wanna play uh, Call of Duty, they'll love the fact that it has an instant response. So golfers are also tends to be impatient. So this projector is much, much faster than the models we've had before. And for the hardcore golf simulator that wants to use uh, a more uh, traditional taller screen, like a 16 by 10 screen, uh, we have quad XGA resolution, and this has the highest pixel density of any projector we've ever made, specifically for golf sim. So it's got pixel density very similar to like what an iPhone does with a retina display, where you up the pixel density, you can't see the pixels, you get totally immersed in the uh, image, and this is designed to pull you in. And for those of you who like to watch the Masters in 4K, it does have HDR support. So needless to say, if you play a Blu-ray player, it's going to make a huge difference on the screen when your family watches movies, but also now TV streams like uh, the Masters do have HDR support. So it's really designed to be able to have a perfect image. And it's also designed to be easy to install. So uh, after, we, after we show people a 4K resolution, they're like, well, I need a short throw lens, or I need this, or I need that, or the other thing. Because face it, you guys are really good at golf sims. A lot of people still struggle with projectors. So what we did is we threw everything that we could at this projector to make it easy to install. The first thing is on the short throw lens, we actually have zoom. So you can move your projector forward or back a little bit uh, and zoom the image in or out 
to be able to fit the screen. So that's the first thing that it's not a huge amount of Zoom, but it's also still at a price point you can afford, but it will, it will adjust very nicely. But my favorite feature here is the lens shift <clears throat> because Murphy's Law states that when you mount a projector, something will be wrong with the area that's perfectly uh, where you really want to mount it. And you have to mount it either to the left or to the right of where you really want to mount it. And lens shift fixes that. It fixes the height, it fixes the width, and it doesn't mess up the picture. It's an optical lens shift. So the picture looks the same. You can just move it around on the wall to be able to position it in your screen. And that makes it, uh, whether you're a DIYer or a professional installer, that makes life much easier. And then for golf simulators, we've done a number, we've done a number of little digital tricks. So digital shrink and offset is a way that we can manipulate the imager. So let's say you you have uh, you bought the latest tailor-made driver and you've got the extra long shaft because uh, your favorite golfer has this and you want to try it out, but you're afraid of hitting your projector. You can move the projector back, which normally would expand the projector image larger than your screen actually is but now we have what we call digital shrink where we can digitally shrink the image and use the processing power in the projector to reconfigure that image digitally uh, so that we can help out the optics to have you have a perfect image on the screen now i say perfect because a video file will see a little bit of flaw in it but uh but it's normal people it will look perfect and then we added some fine tuning tools. So let's say you have to move the projector and tilt it, maybe on a cart or something like that. And the projector would be distorted like you see up in the images above the projector. We have sophisticated vertical and horizontal keystones to be able to correct for that. And my favorite feature on this part is the corner fit where you drag the image that's on the screen to the corners of your screen and it does all the digital processing magic and makes the image line up so that it looks like it's done by a professional installer and uh, and yet you mounted it yourself or that type of thing. For installers that have uh, customers that have more uh, expensive systems, maybe they have a Savant remote or a Crestron home control system, you can actually feed uh, video from some of these systems that have video servers into the projector using HDBase-T, using one of the HDMIs, and you can control it uh, directly from a Savant remote or a Control 4 remote or any of these other types of systems because it's got networking things. So this is a nice piece if you actually have somebody that's a customer that's got one of these nice network TV uh, control systems, it just fits right in. And because BenQ is the second largest brand in the world, uh, all the codes are available to all the control companies. So very easy to install, very easy to control, and very easy to set up and manage. Let's go to the next slide. Now, the third element that makes this projector special, particularly if you sold older technology that uses lamps and uh, LCD panels, is this concept of a maintenance-free projector. A TV that you buy at Best Buy, Costco, anywhere else, you, know, you don't think about maintaining it. You just set it and forget it. The projectors have been a little bit different over the years. So let's walk in through that a little bit and talk about areas that uh, have been a problem for projectors that this projector addresses very uh, elegantly. So the first one is lamps. So go ahead in the next slide here. All right, my screen didn't change. Is the, uh, did, did you change the slide there, Matt? Yeah, it's changed on my end. Um, okay. All right. So I'll talk about lamps. And um, so lamp projectors have a number of problems. The first one is that uh, lamps take a while to warm up before you can hit. So if you're an impatient um, player and you want to be able to see what's happening uh, on the screen instantly, eh, you're going to have to wait a minute or two. The other problem that lamps have is they use mercury and they require cooling down. But the worst part of the lamps is they don't last very long. Even the longest projector lamps, and there's lots of different ways that you can use a projector uh, that uh, uh, has different lamps. The, 
has a lamp that uh, say lasts 5,000 hours, that means that it's 50% brightness at 5,000 hours, assuming it'll last that long. And then replacement lamps, lamps don't last as long either. A laser projector fixes all that. They last for 20,000 hours, which is about 10 to 15 years under normal use. But here's the other thing if you're going to sell a lamp projector. A lamp projector at 5,000 lumens, A, those lamps are expensive. And B, if you recall, only 15% of 5,000 lumen projectors today use lamps, which means that the lamp companies themselves are not going to be producing as many, which means they're not going to be as many around, which means that they're going to be more expensive. And my question always is, what's that replacement lamp going to cost in year 2024, 2025, 2026? And do you plan on having that projector during those years? And what's it going to cost? And can you find it? And as a projector manufacturer, you know, we have now dozens and dozens of laser projector models. And, um, uh, you know, we're buying a lot fewer lamps. Uh, particularly high brightness lamps. So that's the first step. And Matt, my screen is still frozen here, so I'm not sure what what happened. But I think the second slide is the um, uh, then what we're also going to look at is we're going to look at the aspect of dust. Now here's the problem with dust is that dust is going to create problems in a laser projector and we've been making laser projectors for about 10 years or so the traditional answer to dust is that you have a filter and many people don't know that there's a filter on a projector so they discover this when the clean filter light comes on and they pull the filter out and it looks like the image on the left and they have to clean it and replace it or in one brand's case they actually have to wash it dry it and then put it back in the projector what benq did is we said we want to be done with dust. We don't want. We want it to be like a TV. So we designed the engine on the right, and this is a, a inside of a BenQ projector that has a sealed laser engine. So there's no lamp, and there's no filter, and uh, the whole thing is completely sealed so that it can uh, withstand dust, so that dust won't get into it. And because we're a paranoid engineering company. We actually say, well, we like the sealing it, but we want to test it using an industry standard test. So the same test that the Apple Watch goes through for dust, this projector goes through a dust test. They put it into a dust chamber, they run it for a long time, and then they actually disassemble it. And if dust is anywhere inside this uh, engine, uh, they have to go back and redesign it or, or fix it. So it's tested. It is one of the only brands of projector that uh, actually do an IP5X test. So while people will say a filter might work or it's sealed or whatever, unless you see it pass a five IP5X test, there's a risk that that projector could be contaminated with dust. And now, as you can see, these projectors are affordable, they're sealed, and they're certified. So, um, and the last piece that I want to talk about is the concept of reliability, the imager itself. There's a chip inside this projector that uh, actually creates the image. It's a DLP chip. It's made by Texas Instruments, and I'm based here in Dallas, and they're based here in Dallas, and um, uh, some of us at BenQ have worked for uh, DLP. But the, this chip was originally created for the purpose of a high-brightness digital cinema projector. It's designed to originally be used with a 100,000 lumen lamp projector, and now they're using it with 100,000 lumen laser projectors. It's rated for 100,000 hours of life because when Cinemark puts one of these projectors in, they need to have it working perfectly uh, for 100,000 hours because those projectors are run seven days a week, about 10 to 12 hours a day, and they're dependent on them to be able to fill up a movie theater and work properly every time. What you don't want to have happen and what's been happening with other technologies is that over time, the projector starts to turn yellow with other non-DLP technologies. And some of you guys have, may have seen this. If you go to the Projector Central Forum, you'll see that the top message is, my projector keeps turning yellow, what's wrong? Do I need to replace the lamp? No, it's the imager is the problem. So DLP technology was uh, very popular with lamps, but with lasers, it's even better. Because with lasers, while we've been doing this for 10 years and digital cinemas have been using DLP laser projectors for 10 years, Sony, the number one, the number two brand of digital cinema projectors, recently stopped 
making digital cinema projectors because the projectors start turning yellow. And this is a clip from the news article, and you can Google this yourself. Uh, I don't know directly about the product. I'm just reporting on the news here. But the one thing that we've now realized is that with our laser projectors, they don't turn yellow. With uh, other people's, we don't know. And certainly uh, under uh, uh, stressful circumstances in the digital cinema market, uh, another technology hasn't been able to make it. The net of it is, is this projector has uh, Oscar winning image quality. It will last a long time and you don't have to worry about uh, a projector looking on the right when you bought it and after a few years looking on the left. So, so let's compare uh, all of these projectors that you might want to be uh, considering for a golf sim theater. So um, basically what we've got is we've got uh, the LK936 is, uh, the, uh, is the projector we're announcing today. Uh, you can see the specs. I think we've talked about most of them. And when you start comparing what the alternatives are for the top brands, uh, for the major brands out there, you get the choice between either a lower lumen uh, lamp-based projector that's uh, more affordable, a very a more expensive higher lumen projector that doesn't have color accuracy and doesn't have the number of pixels, or a very expensive projector that's bright enough, has the right number of pixels and has the color accuracy, but will cost you the price of a good quality BMW vehicle and about three times or four times the price of a typical uh, golf simulator camera. So we're excited to be able to look at having a mainstream projector. And uh, again, if we summarize, we're gonna look at, a, at this projector, which is the first projector designed for this new concept called a sim theater. It's designed around to have a stunning image that will last long and most importantly, display any content. So while golf simulator projectors have been around for a while, now we actually took on the fact that we need to put the masters in 4K in HDR. So it looks exactly the way it does on your big screen TV and uh, have your uh, kids play uh, Call of Duty and have it be fast, have it be reactive, and also having it look just as good as it does on their monitor that they're playing or their TV that they're playing so now that that projector, that family projector can be used. So it'll have color accuracy. And because it doesn't have to worry, you don't have to worry about replacing a lamp. You can just use it and use it and use it. It won't turn yellow. Projector, the, the laser will last a long time. And uh, bottom line is now you've taken a single purpose device for a SIM projector and a single purpose device for a home theater projector. And now you have the opportunity to sell truly a sim theater. So um, with that, uh, that'll wrap up uh, my presentation here and uh, see if we have any questions or thoughts. You can contact us at uh, either the number on top or via email. And uh, we are very excited. This projector will be out uh, in a few weeks. The first shipments will be leaving and then we'll be getting more production in December. And this is going to be a mainstream projector uh, going forward in 20, uh, 2022. All right. Thanks, Bob. That was super informative. Um, it looks like uh, um, Robert was answering some questions along the way. So that's been super helpful. Um, we do have one additional question um, that just came in. Um, and if anybody has any uh, additional questions they want to ask we can get them answered now um, this comes from Zach Levins uh, will this new projector address the flickering and rainbow effect that is prevalent with the playback and using a DLP projector with high-speed cameras for swing analysis uh, was this consideration when creating this model Great yes question. it is and uh, actually we're working with uh, multiple manufacturers to uh, address the uh, flickering on a high-speed camera so the way a DLP chip works is the very early DLP projectors. If you were, um, if you had a, uh, if you were one of those people that looked at a traffic light and could see dots moving on early LED traffic lights, uh, it's the same effect that you would have on the early projectors of rainbow effect. 
uh, because the image uh, actually layers different colors on the screen at the same time. So you'll have a, a, a very microscopic uh, slice of time that has red and, and blue and green, and that's how we build the image on the screen. And uh, uh, so a high-speed camera, some of the best high-speed cameras actually can capture some of that. So where instead of having it all blended together because the time of the camera exposure is so short, you might get uh, more of one color or less of another color. So now on the side cameras where you're looking at the at the golfer from the side, uh, you won't you won't see that at all. But if you have the camera behind the, the customer or behind the golfer, you will see some amount of flickering uh, on the screen as you're going through a very, very slow you know, progression from the top of the swing down to the bottom. So what we're trying to do is synchronize the amount of when the mirrors are on and off uh, within the cameras. Because if you think about uh, watching uh, you know, Apollo 13, when you looked at a normal TV, uh, you wouldn't see the, uh, the lines that are on when they're filming a TV, you would see all this, this line going up and down the screen. And because the two cameras aren't synchronized, uh, the, the camera making the uh, image of recording a CRT TV and the CRT itself. So we're working on that. Uh, that's a firmware upgrade when it does happen. And uh, we think that problem will eventually be solved. It won't be solved at, at the problem. We have uh, about five, uh, from what I've been told, PGA Pro teachers uh, who are using this type of, uh, of, of technology. And they're like, yeah, it, you know, when, when you'll see it, but we're looking at the golfer, we're not looking at the screen when, when we're looking at a high image uh, camera. So it's still there, not perfect, it will get better, but uh, it, it does give you the, um, that is one of the only drawbacks of the DLP with a high speed camera is that we have to do some more tweaking and we're working with Texas Instruments on this. Great explanation, Bob. Um, we've got another question coming in from Richard Schiller. Uh, He's asking about the comparison between the LK 53ST and the LK 936. It looks like it's the same price of the prior model. Can you expound on the differences? Yes. So the LK 953 ST um, is similar. Uh, the throw ratios are the same. We use the same lens. Uh, the imaging chip is the same, and the, the color accuracy is the same. The early ones did not have golf mode, but the, all of the 936 now have golf mode in there. The biggest difference is, uh, besides the, uh, the shape and the size, the box is a little bit different, is the ability to do corner fit and to do a lot of the vertical and horizontal keystones that are in there and in some of the firmware updates and tweaking that we've done to the colors. So the 953 was our first projector that we thought, can this really do a golf sim theater? And we've had, obviously, if you look up the Chip Eichelberger YouTube video, he explains a lot of that. And there are a lot of other people that are using them as a sim theater projector. That inspired us to say, okay, what do we need to do to make it perfect? And so, uh, but the biggest features on the spec sheet will be the, um, the actual digital corrections and the quad XGA resolution designed to have the high pixel density when you're setting up a dedicated hitting area, which was a request we got from uh, the, uh, the PGA crowd that uh, practices nonstop on these things. Um, and where they do want to see more detail in the middle of the image and they want to hook it up to their computers better so that they can get the best possible uh, golf simulation image with 8.3 million pixels without having to mess around with the uh, uh, with the, all of the formatting between different resolutions of what the computer is putting out and what the projector is doing. Perfect, thanks Bob for that. The next question we've got from Mitchell uh, Stefanu. Uh, can you download the courses to this or is it a different product? So the projector is a passive display. So typically you will hook up your uh, computer that you're running your course into and then uh, load your courses on your computer and then it uses the uh, latest HDMI 4K connection to be able to take those courses up to the projector. Um, and uh, just as a note, uh, when you put these in, uh, make sure that you check the uh, cable because a 4K signal 
uh, degrades faster than a 1080p signal. So you need to make sure you buy the right type of cable so that you're, you've got enough uh, uh, power to push, your cable's good enough to push that signal 4K all the way down. Um, so the projector doesn't hold any data in the, in the projector itself. It does have uh, HTCP content like all of the other BenQ displays, so uh, copy protected content isn't a problem. Uh, so it really is just designed as a passive uh, HDMI display like a TV rather than um, actually holding data of courses or other types of information on your golf simulator ecosystem. Perfect, thanks, Bob. Um, so it looks like we have uh, stopped receiving questions. Um, I'm gonna give you back a few minutes um, of your day, but thank you for joining us and please do follow, um, you know, hashtag sim theater. Uh, be looking for that, you know, coming out um, in in articles and uh, just you know talking it up with your customers and and just talking in general, um, you'll you'll notice that uh, sim theater is going to be something that is um, a hot topic moving forward in uh, tw uh, the end of 2021 for the holidays as well as uh, 2022. Um, so thank you very much. We appreciate it. If uh, there are some additional questions that are coming, we'll be sure to answer them. Um, and uh, you can give us a call, uh, and we'll be able to. Um, get those questions answered as well. So I'll just put that back up, the 800 number, the 888-818-5888, or email us at, at benqb2b.bqa at benq.com. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Bob, for that um, exhilarating uh, presentation on that on, on our new Gulf Sim, uh, Sim Theater product. Um, should be exciting to see you know, what is to come in the future. Um, Everyone have a great day, and uh, we look forward to speaking with you further.